Shalom. Did you ever hear of the Clash of the Titans? Clash of the Titans was a 2010 British-American fantasy adventure film. It was a remake of the 1981 film of the same name, which basically is a story very loosely based on the Greek myth of Perseus. Now, I'm not a movie critic, so I can't tell you if it was any good, and anyway, I didn't see it. But this week, in Parshat Vayigash, we experience a true clash of the titans. And by the way, the slogan from that original 1981 movie was, Experience the Fantastic. So this week, Parshat Vayigash, Yehuda approaches Joseph. And the story of the estrangement from Joseph and his brothers is coming to a head in this week's Parsha, and he came close, and he drew near, and he approached. We're going to read very soon on of the realization that this harsh king, who's been dealing so, so roughly with the brothers, the sons of Jacob, is in reality Yosef. This is the moment of recognition, the moment of revelation that we've been looking forward to. And when we read the verses in the Torah, in the beginning here in chapter 44, beginning with verse 18 of the book of Genesis, Parshat Vayigash, the story that we're getting on the simple level is Yehuda coming forward, enough's enough. He's concerned about the fate of Binyamin. He is recounting the story, and Yosef reaches the point where he can no longer keep up the subterfuge, and he reveals himself. But actually, there's something much deeper going on here, according to the oral tradition, according to the insight of our sages. There's something else going on here on a completely different level, and it's the level of a tremendous confrontation between two opposing forces each one totally confident in, its, in the righteousness of its path, and each one so strong and so able to defend its position. And these two forces, of course, are Yehuda and Yosef. And according to the Midrash, Yehuda was prepared for military action. He was prepared for war. He was prepared to rescue Binyamin and Shimon and all of his brothers, no matter what the cost would be. He came to this meeting that we are reading about here, ostensibly uh, it, it's, it's so, it's so um, poignant, but on a deeper level our sages tell us the background of this Vayigash Elav Yehuda, that Judah approached near to Joseph, Judah thinking, Judah don't forget the forerunner of King David, the bloodline of Mashiach ben David, who is going to be the redeemer of all of Israel, coming towards this mighty, abusive, uh, caustic, foreign king, and he's going to come at him with everything he has, to the extent that the Midrash says that the ministering angels on high said, and this is in the name of Rabbi Yonatan, they said that when the two of them started now, when Yehuda and Yosef started in with each other, with their arguing, the angel said, let's go down and witness the battle between the ox and the lion. And that's what this is known as in the world of the Midrash, Parshat Vayigash. It's the battle of the ox and the lion. It's a true clash of the titans. And of course, Yosef is called an ox, Deuteronomy 33, the blessing of Moses. Sovereignty is his ox-like one. Majesty is his. And Genesis 49, of course, Yehuda, Judah is called a lion cub. So, the Midrash tells us this absolutely incredible scenario of this showdown <clears throat> between these two forces. And of course, it's not just about Yehuda and Yosef. Ma'aseh avot siman lebanim. Throughout the book of Genesis, we know the most important guideline of understanding this, this whole sefer is that everything that transpired for the forefathers is a sign for the children. So Yehuda and Yosef represent, of course, 
the two messianic forces in Israel, Yosef, who went down to Egypt first, who literally paved the way for the salvation, redemption, deliverance, physical sustenance, survival of his own family, and actually of all the world, that redemptive quality is now meeting Yehuda, the king. The lion is the king, and he, of course, is the spiritual heir of the quality and the power of redemption, but they don't recognize each other yet. They don't recognize each other, and this is a clash of titans, and the angels themselves say, what's going to happen now? Let's go see this battle between the ox and the lion. And again, we read the verses in the beginning of Parshat Vayigash, it's flowing, it's, we know it's going to happen. We are touched by the, the pull of the familial reunion. We're touched by the forgiveness of Yosef, by the strength of Yehuda, and the, the eventual rapprochement uh, brings us to a, a certain level of, of uh, nostalgia. But again, in the world of the Midrash, there's something else entirely going on here. Um, <clears throat> again, what were they compared to, says the Midrash? Yosef, a shore who is angry, who goes out, and all the other animals flee from it. Uh, he, he's kicking and goring, and then the lion comes, and all flee from him. Uh, Yosef made himself very difficult, made himself very intransigent, would not accept anything that the brothers were saying. They begin to argue on a deeper level. Yosef brings up the subject of Yosef. Yosef, in the guise of this foreign king, says, and is it not true that you brothers sold your own brother Yosef? And again, uh, the arguing between Yehuda and Yosef, the physical prowess that's described in this midrash is almost uh, something that is uh, taking on some sort of, of a completely different theme. Uh, Yehuda says, I will, I will destroy the entire land of Egypt. I'll start with Paro. Uh, Yosef calls to his son Menashe, who gives one kick in the ground and the whole palace shakes. These are tales here of incredible physical prowess and strength. Yehuda became very angry. He cried out in a great voice, and his voice went out for 400 parasangs until it was heard by Chushim, the son of Dan, who himself was deaf, but who was very, very strong. And he jumped from the land of Canaan and came to Yehuda, and the two of them were ready to destroy the entire land of Egypt. Yosef saw all of this. He saw the signs in the brothers that he knew so well, and he knew that he was in great danger, that all of Egypt was in danger. He began to uh, draw his sword. Yehuda began to draw his sword. This is known in the verse in Psalms 48, for behold, the kings assembled, they came together. But what is all of this? This is not some children's tale of of uh, a continuation of the saga of the brotherly envy and confrontation. This is something else entirely that the Midrash is emphasizing to us, this side, this aspect of this Parshat Vayigash, this meeting between Yehuda and Yosef. The Midrash continues and says that since Yehuda saw that Yosef was not being appeased, Yehuda called out to his brothers and said, why are we standing here? Let's go and, and finish this. And we'll start here and we'll finish with Paro. These are literally the words of the Midrash. And Yehuda called out to Naphtali, go out and see how many markets there are in Egypt. Naphtali was the runner. Naphtali jumped and came back and said, there are 12. Yehuda said to his brothers, good, I'll destroy three and each of you destroy one. All of the children of Jacob, the Midrash continues, put on their armor and their weaponry, and they decided together at that moment to begin to destroy Egypt. They gave a kick in the ground, and it all turned into uh, piles of earth. Yehuda said, I will raise my voice, and I will dry up all the rivers of Egypt. I will take, uh, Reuven said, I'll take my two arms, and I will take the breath out of all of their nostrils. Shimon said, I will make Egypt like Shechem. Levi said, I will destroy it like Stom. God said, I will destroy all their palaces. Yosef saw how serious things were getting, but he had a plan. And he said, you know what? All I care about is Benjamin. I have one question. Who gave Benjamin that piece of advice to steal the cup? 
Benjamin spoke up and said, No one gave me that advice, and I didn't touch the cup. And Yosef said, Swear to me. And Benjamin said, I'll swear. And Yosef said, By what will you swear? And Benjamin said, I will swear by the separation of my brother Joseph. That's what's holy to me. I will swear by the separation of my brother Joseph that I had nothing to do with this. And my, swear, my vow is, Benjamin said, just as I didn't touch Yosef and I didn't participate not in his disrobing, not in throwing him into a pit, not in his sale to the Ishmaelim, not in dipping his coat in blood, so too I had nothing to do with this cup. And so Joseph said, and how do I know that you're actually telling me the truth? And Benjamin said, you can tell my feelings about Joseph by the names of my children, because all of the children born to Benjamin that are described, the names in Genesis 46, are actually all named for Joseph. Bella, and Vecher, and Ashbel, and Gera, and Naaman, and Ach Echi, and Rosh, and Mupim, and Chupim, and Erd, are actually all uh, allusions to Yosef. Bella, that he was swallowed up, Shenivla, that he was swallowed up. Becher, that he was the firstborn of his mother. Ashbel, that he was taken captive. Uh, and all of the names are actually uh, plays on words and allusions. So Benjamin was so totally obsessed with his brother Joseph that he, his entire life was one continuous act of remembrance and mourning. Joseph at that point could no longer contain himself. He desired to reveal himself to his brothers and cried out, take everyone out from here. And the Egyptians removed themselves but listened from behind the wall. And when Joseph revealed himself, the Midrash continues, and I'm, and I'm just capsulizing a description of some sort of an incredible meeting of powers with, and that's what's being emphasized is this a level of, of uh, superhuman strength, superhuman confrontation, superhuman potential, super, superhuman feeling of the clash of true titans. But again, representative of some cosmic force that will be dominant as a theme throughout Jewish history. At that time, the Midrash says, Judah cried out with such a cry that all the walls in Egypt fell. And Paro himself, Pharaoh, fell off of his chair. And then, that was at the moment that Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. And we'd like to know what this is really all about, this description. We know that the sages are so completely focused on the meaning of the verses. We know that they're so completely focused on bringing down to us the secrets of the Torah. What is this story coming to tell us. And we also have to emphasize, you know, these two forces, they represent the power of redemption, each in his own way. Joseph, the force of our own participation in the process of redemption, our own striving to be participatory, not to wait, to prepare, to prepare the way to see to it that we've done everything that we can to sustain and to provide. Yehuda, the master of repentance. Yehuda, who admitted in the incident of Tamar that he was wrong. And again now to Joseph, who admits, who admits the story and that he was wrong. And in the end of last week's Parsha, Parshat Miketz, he seemed to give up. He seemed to be ready to give up. He thought that he really really messed up that he was going to be, be uh, transgressing what he promised to his father and lose both worlds. But now he strengthens himself and he draws near and he's really drawing near to Hashem, to Hashem himself and he's really stating again as the paradigm of the Baal Tshuva of the penitent, he's stating even if I acted improperly I know that Hashem can still save me. And that's really a deeper level of and Yehuda drew near. He drew near to Hashem and he drew near to Yosef's heart, realizing that if he really is sincere, Yosef would have no choice but to reveal himself to him. All this time, Yehuda 
is thinking that he's arguing before a harsh foreign king who has the power of life and death over him. But then God showed him that this entire time he was arguing before none other than his own brother. And retroactively now he understands that they never were in any danger whatsoever, that it was his brother all along, but he did not recognize him. And so too, in the future, Maase Avot Siman Lebanim, what happened to the forefathers is a sign for the children in the future when God delivers us at the time of the perfect redemption. We will begin to understand that we were never actually in exile at all, that no foreign power had sovereignty over us, but that it was actually Hashem Himself. So when these two forces of redemption come together, and that's what this Parsha is really all about, and this is the the example par excellence of the future. This is the map. Vayigash elav Yehuda. When Yehuda and Yosef come together, these two forces that contribute equally to the process of redemption, when they come together, it creates a massive reaction. That's what we're reading about in these somewhat seemingly fanciful midrashim that describe in terms that are easier for us to understand as people that describe in physical terms some sort of massive, brutal, powerful confrontation. Well, of course, of course, when the force of Yosef and the force of Yehuda come together, the whole world hears the cry, Pharaoh himself falls out of his chair. And that's exactly what will happen at the time of the perfect and complete redemption the die has been cast. That's what we see from this week's Torah portion. And that's the true meaning of Maase Avot Siman Lebanim, that that which transpired for the forefathers is a sign for the children, their doings, because this is the template. And when these two forces are recognized and recognize each other, then the angels will come down to see this clash of the titans, and we all truly will experience the fantastic.